Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today i got another project going on on my boat and I'm getting ready to replace the trim tab unit uh, for the trim tabs. Um, what I purchased here and it is a replacement for what I already have is the Bennett Marine unit. And this is a single unit, dual solenoids for dual lines and it works the trim tabs that are on the stern of my boat which levels the boat out at full speed. But what I have going on with the older unit in here that I gotta pull out is I have a solenoid that is leaking. So one of my trim tabs on my port side will not, it would stay down for a while, but after about an hour, it slowly comes back up. So I'm gonna replace this unit as it is over 15 years old and uh, try to get this thing running good again and getting it leveled out. Alrighty, so some of the tools that we need for this is a 7 16 wrench, half inch wrench, and a Phillips head screwdriver. Now, on the new unit, you have these rubber plugs that need to be pulled off right here, and then you can hook your lines up to them. Now, this takes regular ATF transmission fluid, which I have a quart here, and it won't take that much. And then I use a fill bottle with a spout to fill the reservoir up. All right, so we'll refill right here in this. It's got a seal that's over it, but there's a cap that lifts up and it comes out right there. And that's where you fill the range level up to, anywhere in this mark here on this. And I'll adjust that as I start running everything now what's real cool about these units and basically when you push down the button for bow down uh, you hold it down for 15 seconds and then you go back bow up hold it down for 15 seconds once it reaches max and then hold it again and repeat the cycle three times and it will purge all the air out of the system which is really cool uh, so there's no other wrenches or anything that you need for bleeding it just it self purges itself so what we got to do here is I will disconnect the fittings here, here, and then I've got to loosen the screws up for the bracket there. So the bracket comes out, uh, got to unplug the old unit here, and then I have a ground wire that runs underneath the stern over here all the way to the batteries. Now before you start any project like this, always turn it off which I have done. I've turned all power to the off switch. I got dual switches here for dual batteries and then my negative will hook up right here on the negative side. So I've got everything turned off here and I will start disassembling everything. Alrighty, well let's get to it. Alright, to start this you're gonna need two wrenches. You're gonna need a 7 16 on the nut that is up against the main housing to hold that in place and then you're going to need a 7 16 on the outer nut here now on the unit you will see on this one that the fittings that go up in here is up against the housing there's a nut down there and then my fitting goes over top of this both my lines so the 3 8 will go on this one here and then that one there. That way it do, this does not move while you're disconnecting the lines to it. So I've already gotten these broke loose. And now I'm ready to spin these right on out. And I'm gonna make a little mess here on this one. All right, got that one broke loose. All right, there's one line there. And then we'll move this wrench to the other side. And then I can break that one loose. Yep, a little bit of fluid there leaking. But that is to be expected. Just like brake lines too. All right. Almost there. A couple more turns. Here we go. Get a 
grip on it. All right, so now I got both lines disconnected and just push them out of the way so you can work in here. All right, get that off of there. All right, next step is I'm gonna unplug the unit and then I'm gonna take these screws where the unit is mounted back here in the back. I got two of them, I gotta loosen that up so this unit can come up and out and then I can set the new one in there. All righty, so I'm gonna disconnect my power cord here for the unit and then disconnect over at the battery and once I do I'll get this unit out and we take a look at it okay first thing I'm going to do on this part is I'm going to disconnect my negative wire my ground wire from the battery to the uh, pump so I'm going to loosen up the wing nut on the battery here and like I said, make sure you have all your power off, which mine is. And now I'm going to disconnect the ground wire so I can feed it back through. All right, now I got to pull my wires through from the battery from here. And then I got to feed the rest of it through here, which we are doing. And now I'm going to hop over to the other compartment and pull it, the rest of it through all right now I'm over here where the unit is and then I'll finish feeding my wire through here Get that through. and now I got to redo all this and then uh, run it all back through again okay that wire is done. Now next, I'm gonna have to loosen up those screws in the back, which I talked about earlier, and then I'll be able to lift the unit out and unplug this, so that's next. All right, uh, I have unplugged the unit from the main housing wire and harness there. Uh, I've got my four screws in the back uh, loosened up, and now I should be able to retrieve this unit. And it should come right on out. We may have to make a little turn. And now we're out. Alright. So I've got the unit out. And get all the ground wire. Alright. So got the old one out here. Um, I'm gonna have to with my new wire. I'm gonna have to put a new end on it for the ground. And then I will fill up the new unit over here and I'll pre-fill it. I'll get my seal off there. But this is a new unit. It will plug right up to the existing harness. And then I gotta unweave that and put me a new clip on the end of that for the ground for the battery. All right, so I'm gonna pre-fill this. We'll rehang it and we'll start running all the wire. All right. Um, you can get one of these bottles here. You can get these at Lowe's, Home Depot, any hardware store. Uh, just a spout fill bottle to uh, fill the reservoir on this. But using regular ATF automatic transmission fluid, um, you'll remove this cap from the fill hole right here on the side of the reservoir. And just insert it and start filling this thing up. Um, we'll take it up there to the the fill mark it'll take a few minutes to fill it up but i'll get this filled up all the way to the mark and then i'll get back with you all right uh i am on a level surface here and i have my fluid level about three quarters of the way up on here i do have fluid still in the existing lines uh so i'm gonna allow room for that fluid to uh, return back in here and now that i've filled this up return your fill cap and it just pushes right back into position right there and then i'm going to put the lid on this and it comes with a screw you can see that's taped on the bottom side here so we'll pull that off and then um, i'll put this lid on here and well we will be good to go okay um, and we can pull these rubber caps off as well. There's two of them on there to protect those fittings. 
and then this piece just slides off right there alrighty oh, I'll put the screw in the top of it and I'll set this back in place alright guys uh, got the unit back in the bracket got it fully screwed down got four screws on the side got them all tightened up and it's sitting in here uh, all I have to do now is plug up to the main harness here but first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed my ground wire is here I got to feed it through back on the transom here and then I got to get me a connection made for the end of the wire here to um, put on the battery and then once I ground out then I'll plug the harness in up there all right so I'm gonna feed this wire through and I'll get back with you once I hook up to the battery all right I uh, got my wire loop put on wire from my ground uh, put some heat shrink on that and now install the nut back on the battery and make sure you get that good and snug and grab a pair of pliers and I'll come back and tighten that up there we go all right I'm gonna come back and snug that up with a pair of pliers all right now we can go to the other side and I'll get the harness plugged up alrighty I have used a little bit of electrical contact grease because this is down inside uh, the back of the transom it's some you know you get salt water down in here but you want to make sure the contacts stay good and don't get corroded so we'll plug up the unit here okay so that's plugged up alrighty so next on the agenda is I have to get my lines hooked up to the unit all right so we'll take the lines we'll hook up here and here and also there's a fitting that's on here that has port and starboard on it make sure you put that back over top of those nuts up there so they do not turn and it also helps you know what side you are dealing with all right i'm going to hook these up and then uh we'll go from there all right at this point here i got both of my nuts with good furrows on them they're tightened up port and starboard side uh, my electrical connection is made to the wiring harness with uh, electrical contact grease I have the negative wire going to the battery heat shrinked and secured and nut tightened up now I'm ready to turn on power to the unit or to the boat and then we'll start um, getting the trim tabs moving okay as per instructions here using your control hold the bow down position for 15 seconds then bow up for 15 to 20 seconds and then repeat three times this will purge any air from the system no bleeding is necessary and that's step 14 of your handbook that comes with the uh, unit here
Alrighty guys, after that, I actually did that probably about eight or ten times. I only need to do it three or four times, but I wanted to get a video of the trim tabs going up and down for you. But anyhow, alrighty, uh, making sure I got no leaks here. Nothing there, there was nothing in the back. Everything looks good. So all I gotta do now is test run this thing out on the water, but I think we're gonna be in good shape. Alrighty, well I ended up using a few more tools than I was projecting at the beginning uh, because of the negative ground wire. So just need a pair of cutters there to clip the wire. Um, uh, uh, fitting for the end of the negative wire, crimping tool, pair of pliers, Phillip head screwdriver, half inch wrench and 7 16 and um, some logical tape there. Anyhow, again, this unit was a Bennett Marine unit and the package number on this was uh, 6BT50086-73, uh, genuine parts. Alrighty, well, certainly hope you enjoyed that and uh we'll probably see what else we'll see what else kind of uh project we can get into here before long but anyhow i'm looking forward to taking a boat out on the water and seeing what we got to do all righty well i hope you guys enjoyed this um it took less than two hours to get this done so that's pretty quick fix all righty well until next time we will see you guys later and thanks for coming in and watching and we'll see y'all soon